Here is a standard template for a simple filter. Z1 and Z2 are impedances, we have a four terminal network. We'll plug in different impedances and see what we get for a filter in each case. The first four networks are not filters, but they're being used as a basis of comparison to help us identify what kind of filter we have. If Z1 and Z2 are both wires, get the fire extinguisher, you just shorted out your generator. If A to C is not a wire and C to D is, you've still shorted out your output, so not a good idea. If A to C is a wire and C to D is not, then your output equals your input and your circuit doesn't accomplish anything. In the final case, the simplest non-wires we could have in both places is resistors. When you do that, you finally get something useful, a voltage divider. But that's still not a filter, so we need to go beyond this into capacitors and inductors. Here's a quick reminder of how components behave at low, medium, and high frequencies. At low frequencies, a capacitor is basically a gap in the circuit, and an inductor is basically a wire. At high frequencies, it's the other way around. If we know what the circuit does at low frequencies and high frequencies, that's enough to figure out what kind of filter it is. Here are the first two filters. I call them high C and low C. It's a mnemonic. If the capacitor is up high, it's a high pass filter. If the capacitor is low, it's a low pass filter. In the high C filter, if you go to high frequency, the capacitor is basically a wire. You've connected A to C, so your output matches your input. So high frequencies are getting passed through. At low frequencies, the capacitor is basically a gap, so nothing is going to get through. For the low C filter, low frequency means the capacitor is a gap. No current flows through R, so there's no voltage drop there. So voltage A equals voltage C, and the signal gets through. But at high frequencies, the capacitor is a wire. You've shorted out your output, so no signal gets through. That's what makes it a low pass filter. Now, since inductors have opposite behavior to capacitors, it probably doesn't surprise you that if the inductor is high, it's a low pass filter, and if the inductor is low, it's a high pass filter. So that's four filter networks so far. Next up, we use both a capacitor and an inductor together. We can put them in series or in parallel, and we can put them up high or down low. At extreme frequencies, either very high or very low, if you put the LC in series, you will always have a gap. If you put them in parallel, you will always have a wire. It's the intermediate frequencies that will have different behavior. For the upper circuit, extremes have a gap, so no voltage gets through and you have no signal. At intermediate frequencies, that's when you can get a little bit of signal through, and that's why this is a band pass filter. In the opposite situation, it's called a band reject filter. Here are the last two examples. See if you can reason out for yourself why the top one is a band reject filter and why the lower one is a band pass filter. Naturally, these are only the simplest cases of filters, but I hope that's enough to get you started. Thanks for watching.